because our own mayor, the esteemed Stephen Reed, went on CNN to basically assist them in this propaganda mission. So Mayor Stephen Reed of, Al of, of Montgomery, Alabama, goes on and talks to CNN's Anderson Cooper, actually in the same segment. This happened just minutes after the report that you just saw. So this is Mayor Reed on CNN. Absolutely. Uh, it gives me a uh, pause to think about what we may see uh, the next week or two when people get back to their communities uh, from vacationing down the Gulf Coast. Uh, it's problematic that people believe this pandemic is uh, It's problematic for me that people are cavalier about uh, their behavior. Uh, and it's problematic to me that we have not done a better job at the state and national level of explaining the seriousness of this uh, virus to not only the people directly, but also to their friends, their family, and certainly our first responders and medical personnel who are also participating in this. Now, does anybody believe that we just haven't taken this thing seriously enough? Does anybody believe, as Mayor Reed just suggested, that people have been way too cavalier? If anything, what we know now about the virus shows that we were actually way too cautious. Now, I don't think that we should be cavalier. I mean, I don't think that we should, uh, you know, just have kissing booths out in public at this point. Probably a bad idea right now. Not, not a behavior that I would endorse. And I, I think that it's probably a good thing that a lot of the things that we did emphasize things like washing your hands, wearing masks when you're in close contact with people. Those were all positive things. And I understand in ignorance, not knowing what we know about it now, that we took probably some measures that were a little bit overly zealous and, and probably that we didn't need to. You know, I, I can give a lot of grace to that because we didn't know a lot of these things at the time. But Mayor Reed saying, well, I just wish that our, our state and, and national government had been emphasizing this more. What are you talking? We've been talking about this for two freaking months. It's been the only news story with a handful of rare exceptions for two months now. I feel like, if anything, we're way overly saturated with how serious this thing is. Part of the reason I started The Geek End, which is, you know, just the entertainment segment of my show, where we don't really talk about real news, was because of how overly saturated everything was with coronavirus. So I don't get that either. And another thing, too, that I, I take issue with, with Stephen Reed's comments, it just reeks of elitism. Basically, look, we know what's best for you. We know what's best for you. We know what's best for your family. I, it really bothers me that people are going out there and making their own decisions on this. And, and really, we need to start stamping that down. We need to do so. People are being way too cavalier about it. We just need to come in and, and they're not taking it seriously and they don't understand. So we need to come in and, and fix that. Look, the whole idea behind the foundation of this country is people get to make their own decisions. Sometimes those decisions are bad. Sometimes those decisions even endanger themselves. But ultimately, they're their decisions to make. And that's one thing that just drives me up a wall about Mayor Reed with this and, and the whole curfew thing. And we, we already thought about that. I'm not going to rehash that right here and now. But basically, he believes that the average person is an idiot and needs to be coddled like a little child. No, people are going to make mistakes. They're going to make decisions you don't agree with. But that's what freedom looks like. You can't stop people from making dumb decisions. As long as they don't hurt other people in the process, then they should be allowed to make those decisions. And if people are willing to, to go out on a beach, which again is one of the safest places on earth to go in the middle of this thing, if they want to go out on a beach and risk it, that's up to them. I don't understand why Mayor Reed feels like he from his ivory tower needs to intervene and save us from ourselves. We're adults. And I think that that goes back to a larger point that I'm going to make here. That a lot of people, not just through the coronavirus pandemic, but overall, they make the mistake of assuming that anybody whose conclusion is different than theirs, that the person must be uninformed. I've got a lot of friends. On the political right, on the political left, I have some friends that are moderates. And I don't, I, I, I try my absolute dead level best to make sure that whenever we disagree on an issue, 
whether it be a political issue, whether it be a, a biblical or spiritual issue, whatever it is, I try really hard not to make the assumption that if they see it differently than, than I do, it's because they're misinformed or because they are uninformed, they're ignorant. I try really hard not to do that. Now, sometimes after a little digging, I find that actually is the problem. But Mayor Reed is basically assuming that the only reason, according to what he just said, the only reason that people are making these decisions is because they haven't been adequately informed by the state or by the federal government that they've been given a false sense of security. Well, no, it's possible that they saw exactly the same information as you did, and they decided, eh, I'll be a little bit more bold than Mayor Reed would like me to do. Maybe Mayor Reed's just a little bit more timid. And that's not necessarily a bad thing per se, as long as it doesn't interfere with other people's decisions. You shouldn't assume just because somebody's reaction to something is different than yours that it's because they're misinformed or they're, they're idiots. That's not the way to a healthy society, nor one where you'll be able to express your own beliefs in a, in a way that might convince other people. And that's one of the big problems that I have with this. I mean, it kind of makes sense. One of the most authoritarian people in politics is Mayor Bloomberg, and that's the person who Stephen Reed wanted to hold up as his candidate for president. So, yeah, I kind of makes sense now based on this. Let's go ahead and look at this next clip, Mayor Reed. Not talking about the, the beach thing on Memorial Day, they move on to the ICU beds. And this is something that he's been harping on in local media for a while now. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, I know you've been very vocal about the lack of ICU beds, uh, you know, intensive care unit beds in, in Montgomery. I know at one point you were down to one ICU bed left. Where, where do you stand with that now? How are your hospitals? We, we've seen the marginal improvement. We, we have probably 7% uh, of ICU beds. Uh, the hospitals believe that this is manageable, but it's not sustainable. And that's what they're sharing with me is that they are concerned about PPEs. They are concerned about uh, their beds. They are concerned about ICUs and as well as just the overall resources uh, that are dwindling. So we aren't at the cliff yet, but we can see it. And so we're just trying to make sure people understand uh, we want to slow things down before we get too close. Okay, so a couple of things there. First of all, I'm glad that they're concerned about that, but concerned and imminent danger are not the same thing. I'm concerned about a lot of things that I don't think are going to be a full system meltdown anytime soon, but that's the, the way that this goes. Is he's And he's actually pretty good at, at parsing himself and hedging his language there. Mayor Reed is basically trying to make it sound as scary as humanly possible without actually giving the facts, because that would, of course, indicate that it's really not nearly as scary as he's trying to make it sound like it actually is. This is Mayor Reed going on CNN peddling the panic porn. I mean, I don't really have any other way to classify it. And the one fact that he does put in there sounds a lot scarier than it actually is. So you'll hear there, he said, well, we're actually back to having about 7% of our ICU beds available right now. So, okay, 7% beds left. Boy, that, that does sound super scary, doesn't it? Well, it does until you know that the average hospital in America operates at anywhere between 80 and 85% capacity for their ICU beds. So they've got, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20 percent available at any given time. And so 7 percent would mean that for the average hospital, that there's definitely a higher level of capacity than normal, or sorry, a higher level of occupation of those ICU beds than normal, but not necessarily ridiculously high. Not something that looks like what we were promised where, you know, we're not Italy or Spain where there were people being treated literally in the parking lot in giant inflatable bouncy castles. We're nowhere near that. 7% really isn't anything to freak out about. And also when you add in the fact that Montgomery is not the average hospital because Montgomery is 40 minutes away, especially if you're in an ambulance, from a place like UAB and other hospitals there in Birmingham. Now, I've been living in the River Region my entire life. With the exception of my college years where I lived in Auburn, I have lived somewhere within 30 minutes of the capital city from the time I was about one year old up until the time I'm 30 and currently occupy the capital city right now. 
And I can't tell you the number of people, and remember I'm a preacher's kid, so we're really close to a lot of this stuff, that when people are in critical condition, where people have accidents or whatever, they say, oh, they're moving them to Birmingham. Happens all the time. And I'm guessing if you're listening from the capital city right now, you know that is the case. Pretty common thing. Montgomery has a, a relationship with Birmingham that we basically use a lot of their hospital and their medical resources on a very regular basis. And so Montgomery hospitals, I haven't been able to research this or independently verify it yet, but I imagine they probably operate at significantly less than 80 to 85% capacity, which is the average nationwide. Montgomery has a very different relationship with Birmingham than most cities because it's so close by and they have better resources than us. And because of that, we rely on them a lot more than the average city hospital would. And so that 7% is probably even less, you know, mortifying, even though it really wouldn't even be all that scary for a normal hospital to only have 7% left. Then Mayor Reed is trying to do it. And so robbing the 7% figure of all its context makes it sound like, boy, we're really almost out of ICU beds when really, eh, no, we're not, at least not in a way that would put anybody's life in danger. That's the main thing here. But the, uh, the, the thing that I would like to ask too, and this is something that I don't think anybody else has been asking, how many of those extra ICU beds in Montgomery have been occupied because of the shutdown? Because we know, and there have been nationwide reports of people not going in to get preventative treatment. We know that it was actually illegal in Alabama and many other states to have elective procedures, which would be things like mammograms, cancer screenings, that sort of thing. And, and remember, I'm somebody that's been through all of that. How many of those people are having to be given ICU care specifically because of things that were not caught, that were not handled back when the shutdown was taking place, back when everything was in full effect? Now, I'm not trying to make the case that we should, I'm not trying to make the case that this wasn't something that, that merited some concern. I still think that government mandated shutdown should have never happened, but that's actually on a completely different rationale. That's just because I'm a libertarian. But looking at it from that side of it, how many of these things could have been prevented and we'd actually have more ICU beds available were it not for the shutdowns? How many of those people would be in better condition and not even need an ICU bed? Not only would they not, not be coming in all at once when the shutdown's over, but how many people wouldn't have even ever got to the point where they needed an ICU bed if it weren't for the shutdowns? That's a completely unknowable statistic. I realize I can never quantify that. We'll never be able to know that for sure. But it is an interesting thought in what Mayor Reed is talking about and being critical of the governor for opening up the state. It's something that needs to be considered that the very problem he's griping about may have actually been made worse by the policy that he's advocating for. But I think, unfortunately, what we have here is a case of Mayor Reed being a useful idiot in CNN's propaganda. I think that they, they saw somebody from Alabama that would come on and basically recite all of their talking points for them, and so CNN jumped at the opportunity to do it. You'll notice that they did not get to comment on the beaches being overcrowded, the mayor of Orange Beach or Gulf Shores or Mobile or any of those places, they went to the guy that they knew was going to parrot their talking points. It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them. I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.